Okay, fam, let's talk about studying the Bible. I'm going to do my best to not overthink this because I've got so many different routes I could go. There's a couple things that we need to get lined up real quick that are going to help you win and keep you fired up and motivated. Um, I'm going to read you something here in, you know what? I, so here's the deal. I study in the physical Bible. Basically, kind of what I do is I will have a, I've got a bunch of physical Bibles. You can see on my shelf over there, there's a bunch I, I use readily and often. And then hopefully you've seen my other video on my favorite study Bible. We got the Dake annotated study Bible in the New King James, but the Amplified Classic. Oof, there's just something about the Amplified Classic. I'm going to share something with you here. Um, actually, what I'm going to do, let me just pull it up online. So this is not how I typically do it, but I will do this one to show you some things. And then two, um, basically I prefer for the most part to study kind of at its core in the physical Bible. And then I'll use this tool to come and get a bunch of different scriptures uh, or excuse me, translations and build off of it. So let's go over here to BibleGateway.com. This is one of my favorites. And I wanted to show you something. It is in Mark 4, verse 24. And you can see I already have the Amplified Classic Edition here. Now listen to this right here. I want you to get this and what I'm about to share with you. And he said to them, be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. And more besides will be given to you who hear. Be careful what you're hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more will be given to you who hear. So what that's saying, guys, is the measure of thought and study that you give to God's word, the truth that you hear, it will be measured back to you. More virtue and knowledge will come back to you and more besides will be given to you who hear. So here's what that makes me think of. That also makes me think of the scripture that says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. But right off, believe it or not, Travis Peters does not know the reference of that scripture right off the top of my head. So I'm going to click on this new tab and I'm going to Google it real quick. Draw near to me and I will draw near to you. It pulls up and let's see what it is. Okay, it looks like it can be James 4, 8 and Jeremiah 29. So let's click here. I clicked here because I knew I saw it was a Bible gateway uh, link. Otherwise, I would have just grab the scripture and hop back over to my original tab. So what's cool about up here at the top is you can actually put multiple scriptures, but separate them by a comma. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. All right. Let's see what it says here in Jeremiah. You will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me. When you search for me with all your heart, I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations. Okay. This is really cool. So what we're going to do, I want to take these scriptures and I usually make my base version, the Amplified Classic. You don't have to do that. That's just the one I like. Let me hit search again on these scriptures. Come close to God and he will come close to you. Recognize that you are sinners. Get your soiled hands clean. Realize that you've been disloyal, wavering in individuals with divided interests and purify your hearts. Jeremiah 29. Then you will call upon me and you will come and pray to me. I will hear and heed you. Then you will seek me, inquire for, and require me as a vital necessity and find me when you search for me with all your heart. This is awesome because you guys have seen, hopefully, you've seen my, my previous trainings and teachings on this concept of inquiring of the Lord. Here's one of the op er, scriptures that talk about it. Seek me, inquire, ask me questions, ask me for strategy, and then require me as a vital necessity. Whew. I require you, God. I have to have you. You have to help me. You have to answer this for me. That's, that's a big deal. You'll find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will release you from captivity and gather you from all the nations and all the places to which I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. Okay, so listen. 
what I want you to get from that. And then let's go ahead and add on Mark 424. Here's why. Have you seen how we're already creating this like cool little unintentional rabbit trail, but in a great way? Is these scriptures to me are saying somewhat of the same thing. Come close to God. He will come close to you. Call upon God and he will hear and heed you. You will find him when you search for him with all your heart. Mark 4, 24. Be careful what you're hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtual knowledge that comes back to you. And even more, abundance will be given to those who hear. So what that says to me, if you've been feeling spiritually dry, if it's like, God, where are you? How come I used to have such fire and momentum over here when it came to studying, but I'm struggling now? These scriptures are saying, hey, the measure and thought and study you put into it is what you'll get out. If you're not feeling close to God, you got to draw near to him first. Jeremiah 29, when you call upon him, when you come and pray to him, he will hear and heed you. When you seek him, inquire of him, require him, and search for him with all your heart, he'll be found by you. So it's you reaching out to him first. Oh man, I don't, I don't know where God is. You got to do these things. And see what we're doing here is we're building like just from those three scriptures. Don't you start to see, wow, I never thought about it like that. Yeah, I've actually struggled with that before. There's been times where, you know, I've even, I've even prayed. I've even, I've even prayed and been like, God, what's wrong? Why don't I feel you like I used to? Why don't I hear you like I used to? Why did it feel like you were so close and now it feels like you're so far away? Oh, I need to draw near to you. I need to call upon you. I need to get in the word more than ever. I've talked to people who I'm not kidding, six years, eight years, 10 years. And they've said things to me like, I'll ask them, hey, what are you reading in the word? Hey, what books are you reading? Oh, I'm reading this. Hey, reading any Christian books or self-development books, you know, in the spiritual realm and some stuff like that, you know, any faith books? Well, man, I haven't really found anything. I've been getting in the words, been a little dry for me, honestly. This part. So you've been waiting for something that you have to go do and stir up. Uh, I've talked to people before. It's, it's similar to, um, hey, have you been working out lately? Well, I'm just kind of, it's not really motivated. I, I'm just kind of waiting for that motivation to kind of rekindle in me and then I'll go hit the gym. So I'm like, I laugh because it's like, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's not how it works. You go to the gym first, then the feelings come. You get in the word first and then the feelings come. That's what you're, what you're really chasing. All right. So the next thing I do, now that we've kind of built this thing around a topic, I hit this button right here, add parallel. And what it's going to do is going to bring up another column in a different translation. And you can go to this drop down arrow right here and change the translations. There's a whole bunch of options. All right. So my second one, this is all personal preference. I usually go to the new living translation second. NLT. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Okay. About the same. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I like that. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and bring you to your home, home again to your own land. Then he added, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given and you will receive even more. Okay, interesting. Footnote says, the measure you will give will be the measure you get back. Interesting that that phrase parallels with Luke 6, 38. You guys remember that one? So let's go ahead, ahead and hit parallel again. All right, NIV, that's not my favorite translation. Let's go and I like to check out the message. There's another one. So let God work his will in you. Yell aloud no to the devil and watch him make himself scarce. Yeah, it's supposed to be James 4, 7. Yeah. Uh, say a quiet yes to God and he'll be there in no time. Quit dabbling in sin. Purify your inner life. Quit playing the field. Hit bottom. Cry your eyes out. The funny games are over. Get serious. Really serious. Get down on your knees before the master. It's the only way you'll get on your feet. Okay, so you can see though, that's pretty different than what it's saying over here. So translations like the message isn't my my core um 
you know, translation that I start from, but it can be cool to build off of. I'm going to get some core scriptures, you know, from the Amplified Classic, New Living, maybe the New King James, and then from there, let's go look at the message and maybe the passion. All right. When you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I'll listen. When you come looking for me, you'll find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. God's decree. I'll turn things around for you. I'll bring you back from the countries to which I drove you, God's decree. Bring you home to the place from which I sent you off into exile. You can count on it. Mark 4, 24. Listen carefully to what I'm saying. And be wary of the shrewd advice that tells you how to get ahead in the world on your own. Ooh, that's good. Giving, not getting, is the way. Generosity begets generosity. Stinginess impoverishes. Oof. That's interesting. I've never read Mark 4, 24 and 25 in that translation, in the message, because that parallels right there, Proverbs 11, 24 and 25, which is interesting. This stuff just this pops into you. This is pretty cool. We're already getting somewhere with this. So what's happening is God's just saying, look, man, maybe the reason you felt um, un, you know, demotivated or you haven't felt fired up or things have been dry or been hard, it's like a grind is because, hey, seek God with all your heart. Quit dabbling in sin. Quit playing until hip, hit rock bottom. Cry your eyes out. The funny games are over. Get serious, really serious. Get down on your knees before the master. Let's get after this thing. One of the things I want you guys to see is I don't, and this, uh, this is important. This is important. I don't get up in the morning and read the Bible to make God proud of me. I don't do it to, to be like, hey, God, look, did you see I put in the time today? Or even for myself, where it's like, oh, man, feeling good, got in the word today, read my Devo. You know, you're going through the read the Bible in a year plan, which I've tried, did not complete, but I tried it back in the day. It was tough because what happened for me, and I'm not saying this is a blanket truth, just for me, what kept happening was like, I had to just grind and get through a bunch of stuff to just try to have this badge of completion, I guess, that I completed the Bible. But I knew I wasn't really getting comprehension. I knew I wasn't really understanding. I'm actually, in a sense, a pretty slow reader, meaning it takes me a decent time to finish a book or to finish anything because I want to give this thing, like it says in Mark 4.24, I'm trying to give this thing some serious thought and study. Now, why am I studying this? I'm studying this because I'm trying to get understanding. I want to understand what this means. So I'm going to turn in my Dake study Bible, and we're going to go over here to Mark 4.24. Now, why do I want understanding so much? Well, there are lots of Proverbs that talk about seeking understanding and understanding kind of unlocks everything when you understand the word when you understand the promises when you understand god and basically what he's given us what he's made available to us the health the wealth the control the prosperity the authority the dominion when you understand these things, the mission, the call, the fulfillment, the gifts that he's given you, when you understand it, you do it. You live it. See, there are a lot of people with head knowledge. They've read it. They can quote it back to you. But I don't believe they understand it because their lives are not producing the fruit of it. You can tell if somebody understands it, if somebody gets it, because their lives live it. You see the fruit in their lives. You see that they're happy. They have true joy. You see it in their marriage, in their relationship with their spouse. You see it in their kids, in their relationship with their kids. You see it in their confidence. You see that they don't have insecurities. You see it in their money. You see it in their peace. You see it in what they do for a living or how they invest their time. You see it by how much they're at church. I think you can see it by where they sit at church. You see it by what they produce with their life and with their time if they understand this stuff. They don't walk in fear. They don't walk in worry. 
They don't walk in concern. They don't have a short temper. They don't get angry quick. They don't cuss. They don't talk like the world. They don't sound like everybody else. Something different about them. They're more solid. They have a firm foundation. They know who they are. Man, these are these are people who get it. Man, they're starting to do big things. They're starting ministries and businesses and books and employing people and helping people and producing much fruit. Jesus said, you'll know my true disciples because they produce much fruit. And look, I don't know about you, but I'm trying to produce much fruit. I want to understand this thing. So when I get in the word, I'm getting in the word to level up. I want to understand what God has given me. And this this is truly a, a success manual. We're in his army. We're citizens of heaven. He's deployed us on earth. Let's say you've got a hundred year window while you're down here. I'm down here from 1984 to 2084. So I need to get after it. Well, I'm going to study this manual, this handbook, this field guide for success. So that while I'm down here, I can be a very, I can be in this effective Christian as possible for the kingdom. This is like studying your army handbook for success. I'm practicing what it says I can have. I'm doing it. I'm learning it. I'm going deeper in it. And what's cool about the word is it truly is alive. Each time you read it, you get something new out of it. You can read the same book for the hundred years and just get new stuff out of it, new stuff out of it, new stuff out of it. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to go in my Dake study Bible, my favorite study Bible. We're going to look up Mark 4, 24. Now, this is the parable of the sower, parable of the seed, the 30, 60, 100 fold, the, the packed road, thorny road, um, uh, good heart, all that stuff. That's, that's right here. And the Mark 4, 24 is at the end of that. In the New King James, it says, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. The footnote says, Here we have a warning about what we hear and a promise that if we hear correctly, more truth will be given. If we reject the truth, what we have will be taken away. And then it references, we can go look at Luke 18, 16 through 18. And Matthew eleven twenty nine, and see the footnotes there. Man, this is pretty cool. When we give thought and study to the word, he's like, look, man, I like that you're doing that. I'm going to make sure that you get even more out of this. So I think a part of that is the deeper I dive, the more I want to keep going. You guys have probably seen my pictures on Instagram and Facebook of, of my desk when I've got all my Bibles and study notes and all these different things around. And man, it's just so fun and so powerful and God is so good. <laughs> you get to the spot where you're kind of like addicted. We, uh, I, I was, we were at a, a family gathering the other day and I had to run home real quick. Well, I, was, I ended up being gone for an hour and my wife was like, where were you? I was like, man, I, I peeked in my office and I saw the Bible open. I had my iPad out. I saw uh, my notebook and then a book I'm reading. We'll talk about this in a minute, I think. Uh, and I was like, I kind of couldn't help it. I had to kind of, I had to study the word for a minute. <laughs> it sounds super dorky. I get it. But man, there's nothing cooler. Like it's, it's, I'm trying to make reading your Bible cool again because it will transform you. You guys are looking for um, you're looking for a feeling before you get in the word, but I'm telling you, you get in the word first, and the feeling will come. So it's super easy for me to to get into the habit of getting in the word because I know what it produces. Don't you want a life like I described a minute ago? Don't you want a life of peace where nothing phases you? See. The Bible talks about putting on the whole armor of God. In fact, let's do this. Let's look it up real quick. I'm going to go back to this tab. I 
All right, Ephesians 6.10. It talks about putting on the whole armor of God. So again, I've got it pulled up in the Amplified Classic. What we can do is hit the Parallel Edition. Okay, here's what it looks like in the New Living. Here's what it looks like in the Message. So start, start making this the habit of how you do things. Uh, I'm going to see if I can pull this up real quick on... I'm going to pull my iPad up real fast. So y'all can see it, this one right here. Let's go to Ephesians 6. Let me get a little bigger for y'all. Now I want to show you this. This is the little tip, trick, and tactic I want you guys to have. Highlight a scripture or two. And if you're studying it, I typically go and I'll, I'll put a little highlight on it right there. But highlight them again and click them both. And then at the bottom, I want you to hit this button, compare. And all of a sudden, it brings up those scriptures in whatever translations you want to read them in. And you see at the bottom, you can click add a version. And you can pull up your favorite version right here and add it to that list. This right here will change your life. Because as we can go as we go through and we get some of these translations in us, you get that full complete picture of what God's trying to get across to you. Then from there, I will often look it up in my Dake Study Bible and check out all the footnotes that it has on that particular scripture because he has footnotes on basically every scripture. Okay. So a couple translations I like, um, if you don't if you don't have any. So again, like I said, I like to start with the Amplified Classic. I like to then go to the New Living Translation. I do like the Passion Translation after that, the Message after that. I like the New King James. So I'll kind of do that. It's typically Amplified Classic, New Living Translation, which I've heard a couple of different accounts that it is regarded as the most accurate translation. Then New King James Version. And from there, I'll typically hop over to the Passion, to the Message, I actually really like the CJB. It's the complete Jewish Bible. It's actually really interesting how that translation came to be. I studied it out a little bit. It's actually pretty cool. Um, that's one I recommend. It's a little bit in the New Living Translation realm, but it will use some of the original words that the Jewish people used regarding God, which brings a cool little um, faith twist to it. I'll put it that way. Not twist, but like faith punch to it. Okay, so that's a cool one. Um, the YLT 98 is kind of neat. It's called the Young's Literal Translation. It's actually from 1898. And it's supposed to be the most literally translated Bible translation. So that's a kind of a cool one I keep in my pocket as well. NASB is pretty cool. And then ESV is one I've been reading more and more. I keep seeing that one. Um, seems to be getting pretty popular. So just kind of looking at these things. But like I said, I, I kind of go from the core of Amplified Classic, New Living, and New King James, and then build from there. I want to get understanding. Now, as you guys have been on my channel for a while, you, I think you've noticed one of the things I do that's pretty different is I bring about examples and in my mind what I'm answering is, what does this look like in real life? What does this scripture look like applied in real life? Because I'll read it here and it's like, okay, cool. But what does it look like in real life? I'm going to change this over here to the New Living real quick. And... Let's look at something like a, a scripture of the whole armor of God. Something you've read a ton of times, probably at church. But let's read it here. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. So there's so much to unpack, unpack just right there, guys. I could do a whole Bible study on those two, three scriptures. But let's keep going. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you'll still be standing firm. Stand your ground. Put on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you'll be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet. Take the sword of your spirit, which is the word of God. 
Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert. Be persistent in your prayers for believers everywhere. Okay. Now, most people would just read through that, and they read it in a monotone voice. Final word. Be, be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. Put on all God's armor. See me and stay on the front and fight the devils. We are not... No, stop. Hold on for a minute. Wait, what do you mean? Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on all of God's armor. What does that mean? So that you'll be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. Well, I want to, I want to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. What does that mean? What's a strategy? Well, I mean, I know what a strategy is, but like, what are his strategies? Are they obvious? Are they hidden? What does this mean? So now I've got all these questions. So I'm going to go look this up in, in my Dake Study Bible again. I got a feeling there's going to be a lot. Yep. There's a lot. Okay. So he's got a whole <laughs> tons of other scripture references, and there's basically a whole study just on this in the Dake Study Bible. Check it out. But this is how I'm getting understanding. So as I'm thinking on this and looking at it, because it's got stuff I want, right? Like I down there at the bottom. I want to quench, I want to stop the fiery darts of the devil. Well, I got to hold up my shield of faith. What does that look like? What does this mean? This is where we get understanding. I asked the Holy Spirit, show me what you mean here. Help me get understanding on this, Lord. Help me understand this. I want to get this. I want to apply this. Well, I remember God telling this to me years ago. He said, Travis, when does a warrior put on his armor? Before the battle. So in the mornings, I got up today at 4 a.m. I don't always get up that early, but I usually get up between 4 and 5, around there. I got up at 4 today, and I listened to um, my church's YouTube broadcast from yesterday. So I went to church yesterday, took notes, physical notes. I personally take at church, uh, take physical notes in a notebook because I've tried the phone route and I'm telling you it doesn't really work. Now you could say, well, Travis doesn't work for you. I'm going to say it doesn't work for you either, to be honest with you, because you're going to get texts, you're going to get alerts, you're going to get messages, you're going to get distracted. And then even if it, even if you have all those turned off, which you probably don't, but even if you have all those turned off, what's going to happen is your pastor is going to say, Hey, highlight verse 13. And you can't really highlight it. You kind of can online if you're in this app. But then he's going to say, underline this word. And on the margin, write this out over here so you don't forget it. And you can't obey that. You can't do that. You can't follow those instructions. Then you got to switch back from here to your note section. And you're going to get lost. You're going to be wait, what did it say? And then it's just going to get... If you just bring back an old school Bible and bring back your notebook, it's going to work. You'll remember it better. There's all kinds of science. You can Google it. There's all kinds of science between what happens when you put a pen to paper and write. That's why I do it. So I went and re-listened this morning to yesterday's sermon because I know I didn't get everything. I missed some stuff. And it's just like God's word. Every time you listen to this, you're going to get more out of it. Remember, the measure of thought and study you give to something determines the measure that you will receive from it and more will be given. And when it says more will be given, what I think about is, have you ever been in a service listening to the preacher and you're just writing and writing and writing and the Holy Spirit starts flowing and flowing and flowing and you're hearing something, but it might not even be what the man of God or woman of God is preaching. That's the Holy Spirit. It's the message behind the message. It's the real message that God's trying to get to you. I'm telling you, it happens when you start moving this pin. When you start taking notes, I could do a whole video on how I take notes. Maybe I should do that. It's not like some crazy system or formula, but there is a thought behind it. I'm intentional behind how I take notes. I write notes, guys. I, I, I notice how other people take notes who sit around me and I'll have four pages of notes and they've got maybe four lines. And I'm like, well, you need to write down, even if you already heard it and already know it, you've got to write it down again. I've wrote the same things down hundreds of times. And then people are like, Trav, man, you have such a gift at how you memorize scripture. That's amazing. And I'm like, no, 
It's because you sat over here, tried to take notes on your phone, got that Instagram notification, changed over to Instagram for a minute. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And then you missed what he said. And then you just typed out the notes and never looked at them again. I wrote them down, checked them out, went over the sermon the next day and all these different things. And I'm not doing this to make God proud of me or to show off or say, God, look at me. What do I deserve? Look, look what I've earned. I'm doing it because I want understanding because I want to win. Again, I'm down here for 100 years. I want to crush it while I'm down here. I want to be unfazable. I want to put my armor on before the battle. That way, when anything comes at me during the day, it doesn't even phase me. My armor is strong. It just flies right off me. I've got my shield of faith up so those fiery arrows of the devil don't hit me. What does that look like? It might be a doctor's report. It might be an angry customer saying that you're horrible and all this different stuff. It might be a... Um, you know, news from your boss. It might be a job thing fell through. An opportunity didn't happen. It might be you got a flat tire. It might be uh, an unexpected bill in the mail. These are fiery arrows of the devil. Maybe the big thing you're working on, you know, you have to pivot and adjust and twist because this thing isn't going to work like you thought it would. So you got to go re-angle things and go this way now. But it's still a bummer. And it still slowed you down. And it's still a speed bump. Hey, these are fiery darts. Good thing you put your armor on before the day. So I got it before, and before the battle, we're getting our armor on. So whatever comes our way today, we're going to win. It ain't going to phase us. I want you to become unfazable. I got videos in the back, or in the past, on my YouTube channel and podcast called Unfazable, Bulletproof, Unshakable, things like that. Go get those in you. That's what we're trying to build. We're trying to build someone who can't be stopped because they understand what God has given them. The weapons of our warfare. Right here. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, mighty against mighty powers in the dark world, against evil spirits. That's what we're fighting against. Well, that's good news because you've already won every spiritual battle, thanks to what Jesus did. I'm putting on God's armor so I can stand firm against the strategies of the devil. I see what he's doing. I see how he's trying to get to me. And because I know what this word says, the strategies of the devil are obvious and apparent. In the, I don't know what it's called, but I'll just say the CIA. The department where they uh, monitor counterfeit money. They do not study counterfeit money to try to find counterfeit money. They study the true money. They study the truth so the counterfeits become obvious. That's what I'm trying to get you to do. Study the word, study God's word, the truth, so that the counterfeits are obvious. What are the counterfeits? The strategies of the devil. They sometimes come at you, the devil's strategy, he's often subtle and sneaky, and he tries to come in as truth, as wisdom, as logic, as reasoning. But if you've studied the truth, you can spot the counterfeits. Oh man, go watch my video called Unstoppable. I think that's what it's called. It'll explain all that in detail. So this is how I study the word, guys. And what I really wanted to get across to you, I think it's it's less about being um, some kind of magic formula that I use. And it's more about, I want to seek God wholeheartedly. I want to know all that's available to me so that I am a more effective soldier while I'm down here. I want all the God I can get. So I got to learn what this stuff means. I got to get understanding here. I got to grasp this. I'll leave you with this, which is probably what I should have started with. I personally get in the word and most of the time when I get in the word, it is topically, which means I have a topic that I'm trying to learn more about. And often that topic is whatever I'm kind of either struggling with or feeling the most pain in, so to speak. For instance, if I was in pain about money, let me take this down. If I was in financial pain, which I was about 14 years ago, which is what caused me down this path and caused me to start the whole increased life message and, and how to win 
and dominate faith and finances and all that. It was because I was in a tough financial spot. So first thing I did was I was like, well, I know the Bible's got to have the answers, right? So I started looking for biblical answers and financial strategies that God had for us. And that led me down this path. Well, when you get yourself a study Bible, man, you can tackle that. You can find the different topics. What are the promises of prosperity? I can go over to Google and I can type in God's promises for, here we go. God makes two powerful promises when you tithe in faith. So I'm gonna hit command, I'm gonna open that one up. God's plan for your prosperity. All right, let's check some of these things out. Bible verses about money, okay. So I'll grab a couple of these and I'll kind of check them out, see what these scriptures say. Promises of the tithing, yeah, okay. Let's check it out. Then let's go Let's go look up the scriptures they say. Joshua 1, 8, okay, cool. Third John 2, all right, let's pull this thing out. Let's take a look here. And I'm going through this topically. What I want you guys to see is we have to learn to build our faith and that is different than just reading a, D a Devo or your couple chapters for the day that puts you on your plan. Um, there's a lot of, of preachers that teach great sermons, preach great sermons, but it doesn't mean they build your faith. There's a difference. Some of them just make you feel good. And there's a time and a place for that. It's cool. But then there's almost like warrior training where it's like, here's what this looks like in real life. Here's how to apply it. Put on the armor of God. Do it first. Do it before the battle. Man, if your kids wake you up, if you start your day with email, if you start your day and the first thing you do is grab a cup of coffee and head out the door to work, man, you are going to get your butt kicked. We don't want to do that. We're going to put on armor before the battle. Man, we want to win. Get in the Word today. This is going to help you. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. If you wanted me to cover something else or make a video like this on a different topic, or maybe you're saying, Trav, I wish you would have gone deeper on this. Let me know. I'll make the video. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one.